Welcome to the Gourmet Country Boy. I'm Chef Derek Carter. And today we're going to make a chorizo bomb with white cheddar cheese, avocado puree, pico de gallo, and a barbecue glaze. So we're going to start first with my homemade chorizo here. I'm going to slice the casing open. Peel the casing away. We're going to take our cheddar cheese. We're going to cut eight little squares, about a quarter inch by a quarter inch. And that's going to be the filling in the chorizo. So we take a piece of chorizo. Flatten it out, pack the cheese in there, pack it up, roll it around so that we have little balls, meatballs like so. Make sure that the cheese is completely concealed in there. Or you're going to have the cheese leaking out when you put that on the grill. The last one here. So then we're going to take uh, some bacon slices here and lay them out. You can actually just cut in half. Yeah. Then we lay one on top and tuck it under the chorizo balls. And then we lay another one crisscross and under the chorizo balls again. Then again, we're going to roll it so that we have a nice bomb like so. So we'll go further with the other ones. Tuck it so that it's nice underneath and that it'll stay together when we put it on the grill we're going to put it on the grill at about 180 200 degrees Celsius so that's uh, between 300 and 365 um, on, in Fahrenheit and we're going to cook it to a uh, core temperature 
of 145, 150, and 65 in Celsius that we have a complete because it's a, it is a ground meat um, recipe, so we have to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. If you have a little extra bacon, just make sure that you're overlapping each other so that it doesn't come apart when we're on the grill, but it shouldn't with the indirect heat. Um, that's why we're doing that. So it's we have security that the bacon stays on the meat and doesn't, as it cooks, gradually spread apart from the meatball that we have here. So last piece here. So now we have our seven uh, chorizo bacon bombs with white cheddar cheese in the middle. We're gonna now put it on the grill here. Turn our heat down, preheat it, turn your heat all the way down, that should be about the temperatures that we spoke about. You hear that the it's grilling already, and that's what we want. So, it's on the grill. So in the meantime, we're going to start preparing the uh, pico de gallo, and then we'll go to the avocado puree. And that should be about the exact time, but cheers. Cheers. So, we move on to the pico de gallo. We take four vine ripened tomatoes. Gonna quarter them. Then we're going to take the meaty insides away because we only want the, the meat of the so the seeds we're not really going to need. You can use them for other things. You can turn them into uh, they will work for a nice sauce. You can puree them for another style of salsa, uh, the classic style. You can also put them in your stocks or your fawns or freeze them all and then make a nice tomato soup eventually when you have enough frozen. So please don't throw them away. So, get these all done here. So in the end you should have all your tomatoes that look like this and then you just lay them flat. We're going to dice them very small. The size really doesn't matter if you want a little more 
thicker tomato dice, that's fine. I prefer a smaller one for the pico de gallo. In my opinion, you get a little more, shares the aroma a little better. And we get all the other ingredients in there, the cilantro, the cavo, the puree. So we're not overlapping too many aromas and flavors and you can taste everything at one time. Sometimes when you have too much of one thing, it's all you taste in your product and that's not what we we're going for today. So we're looking for something fresh. Plus we have so many aromas in here with the chorizo, the cilantro, the garlic, the lime. We're going to put a little bit of smoked chipotle in there, smoked salt. Almost done here, and then we'll go check on the uh, bombs real quick. Make sure that everything is looking good and the temperature is still good. And then we'll go further with the uh, pico de gallo. The onion, the cilantro, the garlic, jalapeno. So we're looking pretty good here. Make sure our heat is low. Now we're going to move on to the onion. We're only going to need about a half of an onion. I'm using a white sweet onion right now. Um, to me it's a little milder of an onion. Red onion is perfect as well. Shallots, whatever you prefer, green onions. Um, it's all what everyone has a different taste in onions. So. Cut this this way a little bit. Thin slices first. Then we'll go back here to thin slices. Yeah. And then we're looking also very very small dices of the onion as well. So as I said, I'm only using about half the onion. Um, a couple of tablespoons is all you really need. Then we're going to move to the jalapeno. Take the seeds out. It's best to wear a glove when you're doing jalapenos or any kind of chili pepper because um, it does burn your eyes if you put your hands in your face. And, seen it several times with a lot of chefs, especially young chefs, and a lot of chefs have never really worked with the chili pepper. So we're also only going to put about half the jalapeno in here. It's all how spicy you would like it to be. But as I said, I'm also going to add some smoked chipotle uh, Tabasco because I really like that aroma in our pico de gallo. So jalapeno there. We're going to take some our cilantro. You can use the whole cilantro. The stems have a lot of the aroma. Um, so I use it all. 
That's where the most flavor and aroma is. The leaf is nice, but so then we're gonna add that. Then we get to our garlic. That's also however you prefer. I have a nice style of garlic here. It's all a lot of meat. It's not your uh, normal garlic. There's various styles. I prefer this one because you get more garlic out of it. Yeah, you can use it several times. So we got a little bit of garlic as well. Then we're going to go to zesting one lime. So we're going to take the zest of a whole lime here. I'm using a microplane um, because you can actually hold all the zest in the top. It's easier to use. It doesn't go as deep. It's very sharp. You don't get any of the white pit in there. And then I'll show you how nice it is in the end that you can just tip the micro plane over and dump it into the bowl for our salsa. So then we're going to take the juice of half of the lime. Get it in there. Like I said, we're going to add a little bit of uh, Tabasco smoked chipotle to it, a couple drops. Smoked salt. It's a smoked sea salt from Malden. That a good amount, and then you have to check it again, of course, after you make it. I'm going to use a little wine nut oil here. tablespoon or so, some fresh ground black pepper, and then we're going to mix it here and check for flavor. It's nice, fresh salsa, bright colors, it's going to go well with our chorizo bombs here. Smoke salt. So now we're going to move to the avocado puree. Avocado. two avocados here. We're going to add cilantro, garlic, lime juice, salt, pepper, but this time we're going to use regular Tabasco in here um, to make it almost like guacamole but in the parade form. So, And we're going to put it in a pastry bag and puree. So, so as Add our chopped cilantro. Again, we're gonna zest one lime. Um, the lime's gonna help the color stay on the avocado, that it's nice and green. There's also, if you add a little bit of a uh, baking soda to it, helps 
the color stay and then you can keep it for a few days in the cooler. Um, Zest gives a nice aroma to the avocado puree. Cilantro gives a good color, helps with the green as well, and flavors, aromas. A little bit of garlic. And then the juice of the lime as well. This is going to help you puree. We're going to look for a nice smooth puree here. Maybe we need a little more juice. another half the lime. Take a hand mixer, regular stand mixer works as well. Tabasco and salt now and then check for the flavoring of the avocado puree. Couple drops. Some more some salt, smoked salt. Some of my favorite things to use when I'm barbecuing. It gets a nice smoke aroma. Accents everything. We're looking for as smooth of a puree as you can get. So we're looking pretty good here. Check for the seasoning. Perfect as, al as always. Perfect as always. My wife may disagree with me, but so is this. So then we're going to put our avocado puree here in a pastry bag. And we should be almost ready to start glazing our chorizo bombs here. Get everything down. Tighten our bag off. So, now we got our avocado puree. We have our pico de gallo. Yeah? And we're going to look at our bombs here. Ooh, those are looking really good. We're going to check the temperature on them real quick just to make sure that we're where we said. So 66 degrees, so perfect, as I said. And we're going to now take good smoky barbecue sauce. Glaze them. Cheese is oozing out of one of these. It's saying heat me already. I'm ready to eat you. It's 
is a nice uh, starter for a bunch of people. You can make bigger ones, but trust me, they're really heavy when you eat them. I made a bratwurst one and oh, I was full for about three hours after that, making a big bomb. So we're gonna let the glaze sit on here for about 30 seconds to one minute. Pack this away and then we're gonna do a nice little plate presentation here. So this is time for cheers. It's time for cheers. Cheers. Hey. <laughs> so. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap the bombs in tortilla chips. Yeah, nacho cheese tortilla chips. They have this extra crunch to it. Um, and that's just simple. We're just gonna crush them really good with the hands here. Try to break them up as small as you can. Yeah. The more the smaller they are, the better they are on the crumble of the of the bombs here. So, it's time to get our bombs off the grill. First, let's get some stuff out of the way here so we can make a nice plate. a little bit. Nice plate from yeah. Let me grab our bombs. I have a chef hand so I can touch hot food, but a lot of people don't have those hands, so please use tongs. So we're gonna take one of the trays of bombs, put it a little bit on the offset side of the plate. Grab our small spoons down here. Avocado puree. We're gonna get a little bit here on top. And we're going to put a big one there and a little bigger one here on the front side. Sorry, I forgot to roll it in the crumble. Got a little ahead of myself there. So there we go, now we have bomb. So let's finish off the other ones for my family and friends here who joined me. It's really good, it's gonna be really good. Imagine all the uh, aromas we have here, the nacho cheese chips, the smoky Mexican chorizo with the ancho and all the different chilies from Mexico. We have the avocado puree, pico de gallo, it's a little my fusion cuisine, French modern, French American, so you get some pico. Some more avocado puree there. Yeah. I go to the pico de gallo. We get a nice, good size pico de gallo here. So now we've 
Grab some uh, chives blossoms from my uh, garden of herbs over there. And then we're gonna just decorate a little bit on our parades, a little bit across the Pico de Gallo. Don't have to get too authentic. We're the gourmet country boy, so it's just thing. And then we have here the chorizo barbecue bomb with nacho cheese, chips, crumble, avocado puree, and fresh uh, tomato salsa pico de gallo. It's gonna be the bomb. So, so that's our finished plate for today. Till next time, please subscribe to Chef Derek Carter, Gourmet Country Boy on YouTube. I'll be doing this once a week, two times a week maybe. We'll see how it goes. Cheers.